Trevor the traction engine enjoyed living in the Vicarage Orchard. Edward came to see him every day, but sometimes Trevor didn't have enough work to do. I do like to keep busy all the time, he sighed one day, and I do like company, especially children's company. Cheer up, smiled Edward. Sir Topham Hatt has work for you at his new harbor. I'm to take you to meet Thomas today. Oh, exclaimed Trevor happily. A harbor, the seaside, children, that will be lovely. was on his way to the harbor with a trainload of metal pilings. They were needed to make the harbor wall firm and safe. Hello, Thomas, said Edward. This is Trevor, a friend of mine. He's a traction engine. Thomas eyed the newcomer doubtfully. A what engine? A traction engine, explained Trevor. I run on roads instead of rails. Can you take me to the harbor, please? So Topham Hat has a job for me. Yes, of course, replied Thomas, but he was still puzzled. Workmen coupled Trevor's car to Thomas's train, and soon they were ready to start their journey. I'm glad Sir Topham Hatt needs me, called Trevor. I don't have enough to do sometimes, you know, although I can work anywhere. In orchards, on farms, in scrapyards, even at harbors. But you don't run on rails, puffed Thomas. I'm a traction engine. I don't need rails to be useful, replied Trevor. You wait and see. When they reached the harbor, they found everything in confusion. Cars had been derailed, blocking the line, and stone slabs lay everywhere. We must get these pilings passed, said Thomas's driver. They are essential. Trevor, we need you to drag them around this mess. Just the sort of job I like, replied Trevor. Now you'll see, Thomas. I'll soon show you what traction engines can do. Trevor was as good as his word. He dragged the pilings clear with chains and towed them into position. Who needs rails, he muttered cheerfully to himself. traction engine can be. The coaches were full of children. Trevor gave them rides along the harbor. He liked this best of all. He's very kind, said Annie. He reminds me of Thomas, added Clarabelle. Everyone was sorry when it was time for Trevor to go. Thomas pulled him to the junction. A small tear came into Trevor's eye. Thomas pretended not to see. He whistled gaily to make Trevor happy. I'll come and see you if I can, he promised. The vicar will look after you, and there's plenty of work for you now at the orchard, but we may need you again at the harbor someday. That would be wonderful, said Trevor. That evening, Trevor stood remembering his new friend Thomas, the harbor, and most of all, the children. Then he went happily to sleep in the shed at the bottom of the orchard.